What's up guys? So today I wanna to talk about a trend I've seen in the industry and a specific example here talking about bulking up with either a keto diet or a low carb diet. And that is essentially that a lot of people will put out these statements and then they won't really think about like a second level of analysis or really go beyond this trite statement. So just as an example, something that I was talking with a client today in a consultation was, you know, people will say, well, you're a hard gainer. And I mentioned this recently in the podcast with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld was, you know, okay, you're a hard gainer. So, you know, if you're a hard gainer, you know, you really got to emphasize recovery. So you, you have lower volume and less frequency. And then they'll also say, well, hard gainers, they need more volume, you know, and that's obviously we're always going to have people giving contradictory advice, right? Vegan, carnivore, whatever. But sometimes it's the same people where they'll say these statements and they don't realize that it's contradictory to other advice that they've given. And an example that I want to talk about today is people who say, you know, I think a lot of us have heard that if you want a leaner bulk, you want to do a lean bulk, then you should have lower carbs, like cleaner foods, right? And a lot of people who were proponents of, you know, back in the day, the anabolic diet and keto diets for bulking up, really low carb, high fat diets, they will say that this is better for a leaner bulk. Like I said, cleaner gains and things like that. With the idea being that if you have a slow metabolism, if you're somebody who puts on fat easier, then the higher carbs are going to cause these insulin spikes. It's going to result in more weight gain and more fat gain, and that that would be more of a dirty bulk right? And so back when I was younger, I had done uh, several keto bulks. And I mean, I gained muscle, I also gained a lot of fat. And after doing two of them, like two legitimate full bulks doing that, I thought, man, I, I really feel like I'm gaining more fat doing this. Now, here's the thing, a lot of people will also say if you want maximum muscle, you need carbs in your diet, if you want maximum muscle growth, you need a high carb diet, but it's going to be a dirtier bulk, you know, you're going to gain more fat and more muscle. That does not make sense when you actually think about it. The rate that you gain comes down to calories, not if it's carbs or fats, other than you know some shifts in water, right? So you have to look at the proportion of muscle and fat gained per weight gain, right? So if you were to say, hey, I'm gonna do a low carb diet because I want a leaner bulk, what you're saying is that per pound I gain, more of it is going to be muscle, right? Well, if you're saying that a high carb diet puts on the most muscle, then you're saying that per weight gained, a higher proportion is going to be muscle. So you can't say that the leaner bulk, the lower carb, high fat bulk is a higher proportion of muscle and the high carb bulk is a higher proportion of muscle. Okay, it's one or the other. A lot of times people are referring to calorie amount and that would, I think, influence it. Yes, if you gain a lot of weight because you have a high calorie diet, which often accompanies a higher carb diet, then yes, you might gain a higher proportion of fat. You know, if you gain five pounds in a week, most of that is gonna be water and fat, not much muscle, versus extending it. So if you want a cleaner or dirtier bulk, that will be more dependent on your rate of weight gain and the amount of calories that you're eating. But in terms of macros, first of all, most of the evidence shows that there's not a huge difference there, okay? Especially when dieting, you know, I really, most of the time with my clients, I will tell them let's focus on a calorie level primarily and an amount of protein. After that, the protein, I mean, the carbs and the fats, yes, it, it can matter a little bit, but for the most part, as long as you're keeping it reasonable, you're not gonna see huge differences. But even when bulking, I personally don't love the idea of keto bulking. I think there are reasons to do a keto diet. I've done a keto diet many times in my life, but it's not really, I don't do it for optimal body composition, okay? For me, I actually did seem to gain more fat when I had a higher fat diet, which makes sense, higher amounts of fat would be converted to body fat more easily. So that's actually been my experience. You know, people might talk about how they could do a dirty bulk with higher carbs. And sure, if you eat a lot of calories, that is the case. But again, proportionally, if you're looking at per weight gain, okay, so for every one pound I gained, a higher amount seemed to be lean body mass when I had a lower fat, higher carb diet. And that's coming from somebody who was always kind of skinny fat, who does not put on muscle easily, who does put on fat very easily. Even for me, that's my experience. You will see other people saying the opposite, but for me, I definitely noticed that I gained fat a little bit faster with a really high fat diet. So I just, part of it is I wanted to bring up specifically the example there of that contradictory statement again, specifically. But even generally, you'll, you'll notice all the time that people will say these comments and 
not even just in fitness, just in life, but obviously we're sticking to fitness here, where they don't look past that first level analysis, right? They'll say something and it's like, did you think that statement out? If that statement is true, what does that imply? Have you thought about the other statements that you're making even in the same paragraph that seem to contradict that? And, and you'll see that a lot. I'm sure you can think of examples. And if you know of other examples that are very contradictory by a given source, feel free to post it down below. I'd love to have more of a conversation about it. But that's just something I want to talk about. So for me, my experience is I think keto can be great as far as an anti-inflammatory diet. That's kind of like a buzz phrase there. But really, there, there's evidence showing lower amounts of inflammation on a ketogenic diet. For me, I've definitely used it for that purpose. I've used it to improve my gut health and you know how I feel. Um, I notice less swings in my energy throughout the day. But I think there are a lot of merits to a high carb diet. And I personally believe that if you are looking for maximum muscle growth, a higher carb diet is generally going to be the way to go. Now, once you get into dieting, I do think that's a very different story, again, because you have a different goal. At that point, you're looking to maintain muscle as well as possible. People will talk about how there are anti catabolic properties to a ketogenic diet. That's true, but there's really, you know, they'll say ketones are anti catabolic and higher fats are anti catabolic. But Carbs are anti-catabolic too. Having insulin is anti-catabolic. So I think you can go either way there. Personally, I feel better on a ketogenic or just a lower carb diet because I have less cravings. You know, during this cut now, I was maintaining relatively high carbs and low fat and I was losing weight and it was fine. However, my hunger was getting ridiculous. My cravings were getting ridiculous. For anybody who's ever, you know, really dieted down and tried to maintain, you know, maybe having some ice cream or anything like that, or even things like oatmeal, you might find that it stimulates your hunger. Again, not everybody, but for me, the carbs definitely stimulate my hunger and I have less consistent energy. With a ketogenic diet, it kind of suppresses my appetite and makes it a lot easier. And there'd be days where I'd have 1600 calories and I'm just saying, okay, I'm in a big deficit today and I'm just not that hungry. I maintain most of my muscle, I've maintained most of my strength. So we are talking about different goals here. We're talking about different metabolic pathways being activated. So again, that's my experience. I've certainly trained people using many different methods, so I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. So that's it for the video today, guys. I would love it if you would like the video, share it with people if you thought it was interesting and subscribe to the channel. The liking definitely helps the video a lot as far as the YouTube algorithm goes, so it is greatly appreciated.